Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ship Views with me, Carburetor. Today, I'm going to be tackling a question that I have often actually asked myself when it comes to these guys right here, black versions of premium ships. What's the point? That, that's my question, is what's the point? Because often I've asked myself, if I already have the original, why do I need the black? Why do I need the black version? Now, I have the version of the Tirpitz, and I also have the version of the Otago. And this has kind of led me to a question of, well, what am I going to do with these? Are these just going to be ship, or these just going to be uh, port queens that just stay in port and never go out? Or what's going to be the purpose of them? Let's actually change my port. I like naval base, but it's a little... Um, It's a little distracting. So what's the purpose? Well, I'll tell you what the purpose is. The purpose is, is that you get to build two different ships. But wait, they're the same ship. Ah, that's where you differ. Uh, for exhibit A, I present to you the Tirpitz. For exhibit B, appropriately for Tirpitz B, I present Tirpitz B. If we go into the equipment here, you can see how I have this ship build. I have Torpedo Lookout. I have Steering Gears Mod 1. I have Secondary mod Battery Modification 1. Damage Control Mod 1. And I have Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1. In the Turpets B, they're the same in all but one category. I have Aiming Systems Mod 1. Well, what does this do? Well, first off, it primarily affects the artillery. Let's kick this guy back to reserve. Send reserve. Same with this guy. I don't want them to affect the stats. Starting with the turpets, you can see they still both, or at least they should still both, have an artillery rating of 1, so where do, of 91. So where do they differ? Well, on the secondary battery modification one, my main battery has a dispersion of 275 meters, and my secondary battery firing range has a range of 9.6 kilometers. This is, I think these, this still has flags. Yes, it does. So let's demount those. Those, demount those. Head over here and do the same. curious which ones I still have left. I need to rebuy those when I get a second. Head back to the main turpets. So my secondary battery is 9.1 kilometers. If we go to turpets B, you can see I have a maximum dispersion of 255 meters, so I cut 20 meters off of my dispersion. However, I lost with my secondary batteries, quite a bit of range. I'm down to 8.0 kilometers, so I lost 1.1 kilometers of range. Now, you may wonder, what's the point of this? Why would you build a ship like this versus a ship like that? If you're going to be going in and doing a lot of close quarters combat, which I would say is ideal for something like ranked battles, or something where you know that people are going to be pushing close to you, you want to build for your secondaries. However, I would say probably 75% of the time you are going to do more damage with your primary battery than you will ever do with your secondary battery. Now that's not always the case, and this does this this is in flux based off of both the ship and the playstyle. But by having two different versions, it allows you to swap between the two without having to go in here and demount the equipment. Now for this, it really wouldn't be that big a deal. If I wanted to demount this, it would only cost me basically twenty five or 250,000 credits. That's what? A good battle? A halfway decent battle? That's not that big of a deal. However, when you get to some of the more expensive ships, let's pull up. The Pomern, it gives you a few more options. 
Now you can see with this one, I have a somewhat hybrid build on here. I have Aiming Systems Mod 1 here, and I have Auxiliary Armaments Mod 2 here. Now, realistically, I should probably be running main bat or main battery reload with the um, with the aiming systems mod, and I should be running the secondary battery modification one with the auxiliary armaments modification two. If I had been able to get the the Palmer and Black, I could have had one strictly built for secondaries and one strictly built for range. Because as much as people love to pick on the Palmer for it having Basically subpar guns for for its tier, which I will agree they are a little lacklustrous. They are great at cruiser killing and at destroyer killing because you get one heck of a shotgun out of them. There's a reason people use shotguns to hunt small prey because it's very easy to hit them. You may only get two or three hits out of your 12 shots, but two or three hits is better than no hits out of a tight grouping. So... That's just one aspect of that. I wanted to take some time to cover this because for me, for a long time, it had really been, what's the point? I, I actually kind of thought that when I got the Otago. What's the, what's the point? The Otago is a very good case in point as to why that may not be as ideal as something else. Because you really don't have another build that you can throw at the Otago. Your build for the Otago is sit in the back, fling HE, and try not to get shot at. The only thing I would really change is maybe change to prop modification 1 on one of them. And the main reason for doing this is so that you can kind of get out of the hole quicker. So if you decide that you're going to do more island camping, you can hide behind islands. But I will say for the Otago, that's not her strong suit. Her strong suit is being at arm's length, 14 to 15 kilometers out, flinging HE. So unfortunately, these two have the same build. But that may change in the future, like I said. They may end up adding different, uh, they may end up adding different consumables up here or different equipment upgrades. And at that point, it may be something to, to go back at. But I would definitely say if you do end up getting a duplicate ship in any of these, don't get rid of them. Whatever you do, don't get rid of them. Because regardless, regardless, when something like this comes up, you at least get 75 steel out of each ship, out of each duplicate ship you get. And they typically throw two of these out a year. You get typically the Christmas and then the Christmas in July. And this year we got the six year anniversary. Who knows? Next year we might also get the seven year anniversary. So that would be three events in a year. Where you can go through and you can milk these ships for their for their steel and for their uh, coal that they give you. Because the lower tiers do give you coal. Kind of like the Shinonome here who gives you 750 coal. But anyway, I figured I'd take just a quick second here just to create a discussion. Because for a lot of the people who have already been here, who have been on the game for a while, you might already kind of know this. But for some of the newer players... This might be something that you haven't considered. You can run multiple builds, and you don't have to swap back and forth. And it also gives you the opportunity to play with your builds. Like, let's say you decide to, okay, I'm just going to take this ship. I'm going to make these adjustments. Okay, it didn't work. Well, I still have my other ship to, to rely on until I can put this ship back. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Take care. Stay safe. I'm still kind of crossing my fingers that I can get the Yoshino. The Yoshino is kind of the one I was banking on. But anyway, I hope to see you all next time.